How y'all doing this evening? Welcome back to another episode of the Don's Favorite here on Forever I Love Atlanta Sports Podcast. It's your boy, the Don. Here with my co-host, Tyrone. What's good, man? Hey, man. Chilling, chilling. Uh, Hawks are losing bad right now. So, Who we playing right now? Lose. Indiana. They just got beat by the Kings by 30 last night. Oh man, we, why are we losing the teams? We ain't got no business losing to. See that? I it, stuff we missing, we too hype. It's a back to back, and we just too excited. I think we didn't wake up today, and we yeah. had to travel last night. No back to back games do 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 put a toll on you though. I just I don't know, man. It's it's, it's something about Atlanta, especially if you were back to backs. Anyway, man, hopefully they, I don't know. We'll see what happens, man. But I don't know if they're going to pull off this. I just looked at the score. I'm like, uh, uh. All right, but, hey, we got a special guest on right now, uh, Gerald. Uh, let everybody know who you are, where they can find you. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you guys for having me. My name is Gerald Goodrich. I, uh, I'm i a podcaster and a blogger over at Burn Orange Nation, so we cover the Texas Longhorns for SB Nation, and I am. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at GH Goodrich, or you can follow uh, my show, where that's – if you're looking for Texas sports at Longhorn Pod. All right. Thanks for coming on, man. We really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. All right. If you're new to the channel, y'all already know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Check this content out on the Sports Fanatics. And hit us up in the comment section. As always, come out at your hometown sports podcast. All right. Give us a, um, a good detailed synopsis of uh, to Coin Ground. Yeah. So. TQ uh, is what they called him. So if you want to just chop it down, TQ as as all his teammates called him. But he's a, he was in a weird spot. He got recruited. He was recruited to Texas by Charlie Strong, um, who is you know, the head coach uh, until 2016, and he was fired. So he was recruited to Charlie Strong, committed to Charlie Strong, and then signed with with Tom Herman. And so uh, he was in a weird situation where he got recruited to play one to scheme. Switched another for two years, and his final year switched to, four, to a, his third defensive scheme. So um, he's a guy who doesn't pop a lot on the stat sheet, but um, I think the, the thing you, you like about Taquan Graham is that he is a guy who's going to give you uh, good fundamental reps. He's not going to do. He's not going to be out of position. He's not going to do anything stupid to try to make a big play. He's going to be there when the running back tries to cut it back. He's going to be there when the when the quarterback tries to roll out backside. Those types of things that you like. So he's, good at, so he, so he's good at sending the edge. So he, I, I looked at the tape, and I know he played some three th- played a lot of three te- at Texas, but I can see yeah. him as being at a strong side defensive end, just a developmental, just to see what he can do. I don't know if I'm right or wrong on that. Yeah, so he was recruited as a as a defensive end, and he's got the skill. He's got the range. He's kind of he's kind of a tweener when he came into college. You know, six three, two sixty kind of guy. So he played a little bit of five technique uh, when Texas was playing a three three five, and then he shifted down um, to a three technique when Texas switched to to a four man front. And so he's he's got the ability to play more on the outside. He'll probably likely uh, end up at that like shaded shaded three kind of situation or a five technique playing. Uh, between the guards and tackles, but he's definitely uh, somebody who can who can um, keep seams from creating in a, in a defensive front, which is something that we appreciate. So, so for him, do you see him ever? Um, I, I've I've said it, and we talked about. It. I said he's I see him as a weak side, um, and especially in NFL because of his size and like you know his weight. So, do you think he'll probably play more weak side at this level, or you think he can go back to being playing strong side? I, I think weak side is where he's going to make his where he's going to make a living if he if he does. I think he's um, you know that's that's the skill set that I think he brings to the table. He's not a guy who you're going to see ever let his outside arm get trapped. He's not a guy who's ever going to um, really unnecessarily try to play the ball rather than play his spot. Um, he'll scrape along the line like you again. He does all the little things that coaches really like to see from a, from a from a weak side guy. He'll you know get some penetration, scrape along back toward the ball uh, while also maintaining good arm discipline and good hand discipline. Uh, again, in the schemes he's played in, that the the big knock on him is like he doesn't have big numbers, doesn't have a ton of flashy things that he's done. But in the schemes that he was asked to play in, that wasn't his job. Right, his job was to stop big plays from happening on the back end and really play good fundamentals and flush guys out to your ends and your linebackers. And uh, I think that's a, that's a skill set that coaches like. And um, the thing about the thing about TQ that I, that I think a lot of 
the reason why he probably fell as far as he did um, is Texas has struggled to develop guys along along the defensive front outside of a couple guys in the last several years. Um, you got Puna Ford who ended up in Seattle. You got Charles Amena who in Houston. But outside of that, there aren't a ton of big developmental leaps. He was a top 200 kid coming out of high school um, and didn't really see much build off of that because of, I think, again, a lack of development and a lack of um, investment from a, from being able to play in the same defensive front for all four years. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> it's weird because right now with the Falcons defense, we have we have some three tech guys here, but we don't really have we only have one one tech guy, and I don't really see him as a one tech nose tackle type of guy. I'm asking this question. I already know the answer to it, but I'm just asking this for the listeners. That's on that that's uh that's watching right now and listening. Do you see him getting any reps at one tech nose tackle? I I wouldn't see it. I don't think so. I think the weight that he would have to put on to play, you know, at a nose or at a at a one tech would very likely rob him of any of any lateral quickness he has uh, because he would need to put on you know 30 pounds or so um and it's very very rare you see a guy that can keep moving when they when they add 30 pounds again he's an athlete and he's he's a guy who'll play what they ask him to but i don't necessarily see him playing at a, at a one technique i don't okay yeah I, I trust me i knew the answer to that and i i'm like <laughs> no like he's too small now, what I like about him, the tape I saw is he has a high football IQ. He's not the, he's not the most athletic guy, but he 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 has great awareness of what you know the little he think of the little things. So, um, tell me about his football IQ. Yeah, he's like like I said, he's one of those guys who uh, understands the game, knows the game. Uh, he's I hate like the the metaphors that they use, but he's one of those coach on the field kind of guys where yeah. he's going to be in the right spots. He's going to put other guys in the right spots. Um, he was voted a team captain his his last year uh, at Texas, so he's one of those guys that's he's a locker room guy. He's a guy that his play, other players like and respect, uh, and he, he does he. He's earned that reputation by giving you 100% every day when he's on the field and really, again, doing the little things, doing the right things, going to every rep and doing exactly what he needs to do uh, to do his job. And so I think you're absolutely right. He's he's a very smart guy, um, loves the game of football, really came in and, and – um, when they when they talked during the offseason heading into this, he was a guy who everybody was buzzing about. TQ is a guy we all love. TQ is a guy who really creates the the tone and the culture for the team. And that's uh, – you know. When you, when you get to the NFL level, locker room guys are important and guys who can really uh, not sabotage a culture, and he's not going to be a guy to do that. So I think that that on top of his football IQ is uh, definitely something to like about him. And that's the problem with the Falcons for the past few years. We Our locker room was just – I ain't going to say it was, it was – it was prisoners was running in asylum or anything like that. They just didn't have a vocal guy because the defense was so young. But the offense, you had these established players like Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Alex Mack. He well, he's not here anymore. But you had those veterans, those ten year plus veterans, on that side of the ball. But the thing is, it's like they one, they weren't that vocal enough to just put a whole team to rally up around. And that's the thing we need leaders like like natural born leaders. Cause yeah. you you can tell somebody you're a captain, but is they are they do, do they really have leadership capabilities? Yeah, yeah. I, I, go ahead. You can go ahead. You can go ahead. I was saying, and I think that's that's absolutely right. And he's a guy who, again, um, the way Texas handled its uh, its captains, they were voted on by um, voted on by their peers and by the other players on the team, and so. He he's a guy who again the guys around him respect and that's something that I think you can't it's not something you can teach. All right, uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Westcott. Uh, let everybody know um, where they can find you. Yeah, Westcott Edwards, uh, Burn Orange Nation uh, is a website, and then uh, SBN underscore W E S C O T T on uh, Twitter. All right, my bad, man. I was like before I hopped on the show, I was in that eating, um dinner with my family and everything, so I was just trying to. 
So he heard me and I came over here. I saw him in. I'm like, okay, let's go ahead and do the show. So and I looked at my Twitter, I'm like, oh, yeah, you yeah, you good. So good good thing you know you can turn into a zombie for the COVID shot. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet anyway. Give us some time, we'll see what happens. I gotta go get my second shot in a couple of weeks, so I'm not, um, yeah, I'm not happy about that. First shot was all right, just yeah. shot, I don't know. So, all right, <laughs> give us your, uh, give us your take on uh, Taquan uh, Graham. Yeah, well, I think uh, Gerald was just talking about you know his character a little bit. He was one of 17 captains uh, for Texas. He was a guy who was you know really respected by his teammate, and you know I think anytime you start talking about guys. You know who kind of come in in, in the sixth or seventh round. Um, teams are taking those guys because they have confidence that they're high character players. Um, I think guys who don't, if they're a little bit borderline, uh, those are players who uh, end up falling out of the draft. Um, you know, one thing about TQ, I, I think, is that he seems like one of those guys who, um, you know, has some upside in his professional career. He ended up moving around a little bit. Um, he played kind of the four I. Uh, outside of defensive end under Todd Orlando when Texas played an odd front. Um, I, I was looking at the Falcons. It, they were talking about being multiple. So it looks like, you know, he may have a chance at kind of out at the four eye and then, you know, sliding in, um, you know, to the three technique. Uh, his production was actually a little bit better per game outside, um, but he's not really a guy who's going to provide, you know, a lot of pass rushing. Uh, he, he is a pretty solid athlete. Um, you know, he's pretty strong, but, you know, adding some pass rushing moves, I think is something that, is going to be important for him because, um, you know, otherwise he's a guy who's really going to have to make his living uh, just stopping the run. Yeah. This is what I was thinking. All right. This can be like a set, like a, a either three. Well, this would be my three, four set. Um, I have a guy like, well, I'm going to say four. Three. Let's do four. Three. I have Grady Jerry on the outside. And then in three, ten, I had to point. Then you have Tyler Davidson at that one. And then on the other side, um, I put either Kamitsky or Marlon Davidson. I think that'd be a good lineup right now. That's, That's what you think about lineup. Yeah. That's what you think about that, Tyrone? That's a very strong lineup. That's a scary lineup. I mean, you got Tyler and he, Tyler, I mean, I don't know if I want to put Tyler on the other end. Uh he's one, I think, he's one he's one tip, man. You gotta have him yeah, there one. You gonna have to have him there. So yeah, I actually that actually work. You think? I think we still need speed though. I think Grady Jared on the edge is disgusting. I we've never seen him at DN, and I think he'll probably dog attack a lot, even though he's smaller. Um, and we already know what uh, Marlin can do because we watched him at Auburn, and he's he's meant to play in. But I that Taquan at a three technique that means you have Grady at the what the seven. You gonna put Grady at a seven on the outside? Um. And then Tyler Davidson is going to definitely have to play the one. And yeah, you have a better I chance. Can see it Grady, yeah, Grady Jarrett has a better chance of being one on one on the outside. If you yeah. if you leave him at three, that three tet, the offensive line, they're going to scheme a way to block the double. Yeah, they double team him. But so I have a question for um, both of y'all. So did Saquon get doubled a lot? And how did he do versus double teams? Did he hold his own, or was he more of like did he get pushed a lot, or was he like did he stand his ground a lot? Yeah, so he he didn't draw a ton of doubles. He had the advantage of, of guys like Joseph Osai and uh, Keandre Coburn on, on the defense with him that really ate up a lot of blocks. Um, but he has the ability to fight. He, like like Westcott said, he's uh, he's a strong guy. He's got a good good upper body and a good base. So he's a guy who can who can deal with the double team and fight off blocks if he needs to. But um, he had the advantage of a couple of other higher value targets along the defensive front that uh, ate significantly more blocks than he did. Yeah, well, you know, Keandre Coburn, who he played next to last year, is about uh, six foot one and, and 350 pounds uh, with good quickness for that side. So, I mean, it's just a massive guy next to him. And, you know, really, you know, as I was kind of mentioning, uh, when he was playing outside as, as a four technique, he really had his most success uh, when he was playing heads up on offensive tackles uh, rather than kind of playing half a man and, and trying to shoot into gaps. Okay. Well, that's uh, as see that's information we need to know. Um, I know we did a press conference yesterday. Um, that was pretty much saying that he he'll, he'll probably much see pretty much have some time at edge, but I'm I won't be shocked that they have him you know playing three tech as well. One tech I don't want him playing. 
So yeah. um, but, he's not a space eater. So yeah, I think you know one thing with TQ is that I think uh, you know pro day he was about two hundred ninety or so pounds. Um, I think he's a guy that it might make sense for him to lean up a little bit if he could get down to two seventy five. Then you know you might see him be able to show a little bit more quickness. And then if he was playing, you know, at three technique and you want to try to use him to shoot some gaps and, you know, he might be a little bit more effective there uh, than he was in college since he played, you know, kind of between 290 and about 300 pounds over the last couple of years. See, we got a couple of guys like that on our team right now, Marlon Davidson and uh, John Kaminsky. Like we draft was well, Kaminsky was really a quarterback, but they transferred him. He ate a lot and woke up and he became a head. And he's like 290. Uh, yeah. Marlon Davidson, you know, he played at Auburn. And, you know, he was an outside guy, but then they try to move him inside. And I feel like just leave him outside. I want I want to have him at three tech. I just – the tape I saw out of him, he better playing outside. He's an outside player. He's so big, but you, you would think he doesn't want to play outside. You think he'd play inside, but he's fast. He's quick. You don't move – Kaminsky, of course, like you say, he's just bulked up. And he just got to play DN. But really and truly, you don't move Marlon Davis. All his best plays was him at end. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you you had to have him on the edge. And so if TQ comes in here, I I had a I had a theory, like you said, he he goes down. I said he might go up if he if we're gonna make him go up in weight, if we're gonna make him more of an inside player. I said he'd probably have to gain weight. But I could see him going down like two seventy five. And you know, just being fast, being a quick, being a quick D tackle, which will work. I mean, we don't have a lot of those. We don't. We we were trying to get those. I'll say that we tried that experiment with Dan Quinn, and that that I think it's all about our D line coat. And I just want to see you have that pass rush for him. I think that's the only thing that's really that I saw on tape that wasn't his strong suit was his pass rush. And you guys yeah. say, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that's kind of been the the knock on Tiki. I would say one thing about him, you know, he was an end in high school uh, when he was about 250, 260 pounds. So he does have experience out there, but, you know, I think he's, he's kind of way past that point at, you know, 290 plus pounds now. And like I said, you know, he's competing with guys like Kaminsky, Marlon Davidson, uh, Idris Sinat still on the team right now. So he has a lot of competition to, to try to beat out, um, in my opinion. Um, do y'all think he'll – He'll make the team, practice squad. Go ahead. Yeah, I, you know, sorry. I think he's, um, like I said, I think he's a guy who you know, coaches are going to like what he brings to the table as far as work ethic, character, those types of things. And so he's a guy that you want to keep around. So I think if he's not on the, you know, on the 52 man, I think he's a guy that they, it, he's like that instant re-sign to the practice squad to keep him around, keep him in the locker room, uh, keep him in the system. So I also think he's a guy, and I mentioned this before, who still probably has some developing to do and some uh, technique to build. So if he can get some good coaching, he's a guy who I think they want to have around and, and keep in the system. Oh, okay. All right. I I agree. You know, well, like I said, he has a high football IQ, and then you know and he was a uh, captain for the Longhorns defense. Like you got to you got to find a place for him somehow, some way. So that's what I like about what Terry did this draft. There's a lot of captains on his team. They're like, well, college captains that we drafted um, onto this team. Mind you, Drew Dalman was a captain, and take TQ was. I think uh, Ogan Desi was. So. A lot of guys we drafted in these later rounds are all team captains. So I think a lot of them have a lot of talent. And you can see it in TQ, he has talent. I think it's just going to take, like like we said, coaching is just, I think it's going to have to, was going to make him better. Um, I like him. I'm, I like him and I like Ogan Deji. I like the two pickups. So I, whatever we do between those two, I'm not going to be mad because they're both, they're both solid. D lineman, so I, I really don't matter. I, I'm really, I'm really not gonna be mad if one goes to the practice squad and one plays or one doesn't. Um, like I think, I think TQ, I think TQ makes the roster off of like, like um, you said, you like it's off of his being a good character guy and his work and the way he does as a player because that's what we, that's really kind of sort of what our coach and GM like we're talking about on day, that end of the night. Press conference, it was the end of the day because it was uh, day three. So, end of the day, press conference, they were just saying, like, we like the guys we got because of their character. 
even Kyle Pitts was like character guy. We we saw his talent, but it was still more of his character. So I think that's really kind of sort of cool to, you know, like to have those guys. So I think that a lot of these guys, especially the, the seven, I think they make it just off of character or they don't make it off character their practice squad just to be in the locker room. I mean, one thing that you know about, you know, those team captains, they've already been vetted by their teammates. You know, those are their teammates are, are you know, voting them captain. And so, you know, whatever research you do, you know that, you know, all of their teammates, that's a guy that they have a lot of respect for. Yeah, I'm not counting out some not because we need. I think that's. I think, um, for our D line, we just had to go where we went. We went another D and we went another D tackle, and we had to go there. I really think that's where we had to go. Um, and we signed, uh, the guy from BYU as an undrafted free agent. They're big D tackle, so we're gonna have to have multiple one techs because we don't have a real one tech on this team. So that's why, and we really. Really and truly, our inside D-line, we have DNs, and we have a lot of DNs that played D-tackle last year, and that wasn't well, it wasn't a good result, as you can tell by our record. So I think a lot of the guys, like it's going to, like he said, it's going to be a tough rotation to reject. I don't know how, I don't know who. I think, but I think those, I think Graham and Ogundesi make the roster, really and truly. I think, I think he makes it because we need him. Really and truly, I'm gonna be honest. I think we need him on this team, so I think that's why he makes it. All right. Well, hey, I feel like I think he'll make it. I think he'll make it just by looking at his tape. I feel like he'll he'll beat out he'll beat out somebody. I'm not gonna tell y'all who because I don't like making predictions, but I will make the prediction that he will make the team. Um, he is he looks like a Dean Pease type of player. And they're gonna they're gonna pretty much bring somebody here who plays that you know to play in that role. So that's all I'm gonna say on that. But hey, I appreciate y'all coming on. Uh, one more time, can y'all let everybody know where they can find you guys? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me. I'm at gh Gurdage on Twitter, and you can also find me at Longhorn Pod. That's where I tweet about uh, Texas sports, and then obviously Burn Orange Nation uh, is where I do my writing. Bernard's Nation as well. Twitter, SBN underscore Westcott, W E S C O T T. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having us on. Hey, thank y'all for coming on. Yeah, thank y'all for coming on. We really appreciate it. All right, go, (laughs) Birds. Thank you. Hey, um, oh, I got one more thing. Uh, Sorry about you guys' laws. Uh, I just saw that. Sorry about uh, Ellinger. I heard about that. Oh, yeah, Ellinger. Yeah, rest in peace. Sorry about that. I'm going to talk to him before the end. Yeah, that's that's tough. I I saw that and was like, bro, what? Now, a lot of loss in that family. Sam Sam and uh, Jake lost their dad too about eight years ago to a heart attack. So too much tragedy now for the Yeah, that is, man. That's rough. Right. Yeah. Uh, what you about? What'd you say? Hug your loved ones. Tell them you love them. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. You'll never know when it's gonna be your last day or somebody else's last day. That's why you cherish every every moment when you love. Cause you never know if it would be the last time you see them. Trust and believe. I don't take yes, that at all. So, but um, thank y'all for coming on. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right. If you're new to the channel, y'all don't know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Share this content out with Atlanta Sports Fanatics. And hit us up in the comment section. As always, come holler. At your hometown sports podcast, we're well done with another episode of the Don's Favor. Y'all have a great uh, evening. Um, King, I don't know if King is King doing the um the Frank Darby show right now. I don't know if it started or not. So um, if right. it is, if it has, y'all go over there um, and go to chop it up with King. No, he's not live right now. So we got to get off so he can do his Frank Darby show. And then there will be a uh, Kings Rim tonight after the Hawks game. Yes, it will. So y'all take it easy. Y'all have a great evening. See y'all later.